rebel. Secondary modern school ended in those days when you were 15 and I was accepted by the Welling Garden City College of Further Education. The college was a campus of modern buildings in another new town with an art class that would encourage me to express myself with confidence. It was here where I learned to explore the alternative lifestyle that would help shape my views and form my values. That summer of 1962, found me lying on the grass by the fountain with long-haired girls in sloppy joes, sandals and black mascara, talking painting, pottery and poetry and debating revolution and banning the bomb. We loved the songs of Joan Baez, Pete Seeger and the incomparable Woody Guthrie and in the common room we kept cool with the sounds of Miles Davis. Our local youth club leader was all right and gave us arty types a small outbuilding on the farm for a studio. In the barn, Dippy, Sammy and I smoked, sketched and talked of Jack Kerouac's book On the Road, dreaming of Zen, of a beat girl and some pot to smoke with her. Jazz became my bag. On my bedroom wall, I pasted up clippings of the great cats of drums from Downbeat magazine, Max Roach and Gene Krupa. I listened to the blue bossa nova sounds of Stan Getz and Carlos Jobim, the bebop of Charlie Parker and Gene Krupa's big band at Carnegie Hall. I discovered the poetry and jazz of the San Francisco scene, the London sounds of the Tony Kinsey Quartet and the poet Christopher Logue, whose EP record, Redbird, I played to death. Photos of the Paris Bohemian scene of the 1950s also held a fascination for me, amazingly. One girl from the photos, Valley, would later dance to my music in the Albert Hall.